Metastock has erased all of the losses it's experienced over the last year. After the company reported their Q1 earnings after the bell, we are seeing shares now back up over $228 per share. That means over the last year, stocks up about 12% year to date up north of 70 percent on today's show we'll go through those q1 revenues we'll take a look not only the q1 i really think it's that q2 guidance that we got after the bell as well from meta that is helping shares continue to surge we'll come over here and look at the financials take a look at the revenue how the cost cuts that meta has been realizing over the past couple of months how those have flowed through the companies we'll take a look at cash flows how many shares the company has bought back we'll look at this from a financial perspective and then we'll come over here and look at this from a technical perspective as well shares close the day right about 209 dollars per share we're seeing in the after hours they are gapping up about nine percent up here to about 228 dollars per share these shares of meta have formed a v-shaped recovery which uh, i just did not think is possible but meta proving investors and the naysayers wrong the company's q1 came in very good revenue coming in at 28.65 billion dollars that was just 2.7 percent growth year over year but it did beat the expectations of about 27.66 billion dollars the high-end estimate on wall street covering 31 analysts was 29.3 so not far from the high-end estimate i think more importantly than that we got q2 guidance over at meta between 29.5 up to maybe $32 billion, which is actually a pretty wide range. Consensus estimate for the Q2 was 29.47. The high-end estimate of 37 analysts for Meta's Q2 earnings was $30.53 billion. So Meta is saying we might come in at $32 billion. And sometimes when a company gives guidance, it's actually a little bit under what they might actually achieve so conceivably meta could come north of 32 billion dollars of revenue in the upcoming quarter wall street's high-end estimate was 30.5 that is going to send your shares soaring even on the run that Meta has been on over the past couple of months. Now, $28.6 billion worth of revenue. We talked about how that represented about 2.7% growth year over year, but it's really those Q2 numbers are going to knock it out of the park. And what analysts are going to start to do is they're going to be like, well, this company continues to execute on cost cuts. Not all of that is flowed down as you have severance costs and other HR costs that don't flow through the financials until several months after you actually actually let an employee go well i tell you what you've got increasing revenue and we see year over year our total cost and expenses at meta went from 19.4 up to just 21.4 billion dollars the company is projecting 86 to 90 billion dollars in total cost and expenses for the full year that represents another three to five billion dollars of termination costs but you're essentially on a 21 to 22 maybe as high as 23 billion dollar run rate on those costs and if you have those revenues continue to increase at meta especially outpacing expectations well that is going to drive profits over the last year operating income went down from 8.5 down to 7.3 but again in subsequent quarters that is likely to be offset a little bit by increasing revenues that this company is starting to project. Now, the company continues to buy back shares. We'll show that to you when we get down to cash flows. So that does impact your EPS, which went from 272 down to 220. On the balance sheet, company has a boatload of cash. They did borrow about $10 billion or about $9.9 .9 billion. This was earlier this year, bolstered up their balance sheet a little bit. They've got plenty of cash in likely not a lot of uses for it now when you come down here to the cash flow statement you pull down your net income of 5.7 billion dollars last year was 7.5 billion dollars you get to add things like share-based compensation depreciation and non-cash charge your accounts receivables come back as well you get your operating cash flow right here the cash operating instagram facebook whatsapp and those reality labs which will show you in a minute is still a disaster about 14 billion dollars of positive cash flow this year 
about flat, down just fractionally a year ago. So despite less net income, the cash flow was about the same. Again, going to give investors confidence in subsequent quarters when the quote year of efficiency continues to play out and increasing revenues. This company's looking great all of a sudden. Purchase of property, plant and equipment ticked up year over year. Overall, our investing activities went from about 4.8 billion up to about 6.7 billion dollars but again you have 14 billion dollars worth of positive cash flow 6.7 billion dollars used in investing activities is not a whole lot now the company doesn't have anything else to do other than repurchase the stock company bought back 9.4 billion dollars worth of shares this quarter last year on a quarterly basis they bought back 9.5 billion dollars worth of stock and that is what they are using for their positive cash flow now here's the most important thing and the thing that many investors are still going to be critical with meta because these shares of meta i believe if it wasn't for the reality labs first of all they wouldn't have taken this big gigantic drop a lot of this drop is due to reality labs and so in hindsight, it gave some investors a great buying opportunity for this stock. I think this stock would actually be pretty darn close to making all-time highs if it wasn't for the Reality Labs segment, which will show you year over year. Everybody keeps talking about Reality Labs, although the comments in my videos have gotten less and less as I've been very critical of this. You see here, your revenue year over year. This is supposed to be the future. This is supposed to be the next thing that drives meta into the future look at this your revenue year over year from 695 million again 695 million to a 500 billion dollar company is a rounding error we went down 50 percent i want to repeat reality labs revenue which again is supposed to be the future of this company is down 50 percent mark it's time to take this and put it in the trash or rename it the ai or the artificial intelligence lab or something like that shares would probably set soar 50 percent if they were just to rename this look at your losses from reality labs so your revenue down 50 percent but your losses went from 2.9 billion all the way up to nearly four billion dollars that's nearly 30 percent or over 30 percent rise in your losses so revenue down 50 percent losses up 30 percent that is not going to make investors happy because everything else with this business is humming right along look at your advertising business 27 billion up to 28 billion we have to figure in the upcoming quarter as well with 29.5 to nearly 32 billion dollars maybe higher than 32 billion dollars of revenue on the upside things are going to be looking great from an operating perspective next year, or excuse me, next quarter, when it comes to the advertising business and subsequent quarters likely as well. That's the other thing with Meta. Looks like Q2 is gonna be coming to the upside. Q3, we have to imagine maybe gets over 29 billion. Q4 might be north of 35 billion. All of a sudden we're back to a high single digit, maybe a low double digit growth rate on this stock. That is very exciting because you notice your income from operations from your bread and butter business went from 11.5, basically flat to 11.2, but we have to factor in subsequent quarters likely going to trend in the right direction. Things are looking pretty darn good over at Meta. If they can that Reality Labs business, I tell you what, all-time highs absolutely in play. But right now, what's in play is still the steepest of steepest uptrends. This actually should give you confidence for a lot of stocks that we're looking at. NVIDIA, Microsoft, Google to a lesser degree, Apple, Amazon even. Pretty much everybody in FANG minus Tesla is making this. Now, some are further along, Meta, NVIDIA, Apple, much further along in their rise above the lows. Meta absolutely hunting this gap. There's a gap in the chart between 247 up to 293. This stock is hunting that out now. We should meet, though, some overhead resistance. We blew through. There was an area right here at 220. Blew through that area. There's an area above that at 245. Meta to churn through this. Not going to be the easiest thing. Right there in the middle. Pullbacks to 220 probably could be bought. A push above 245 can be bought as you play the momentum through the gap. And the fact that investors are actually, it appears, starting to forgive Mark for going on this Reality Labs tangent that generates basically no revenue, but actual tangible losses. Tell you what, if you bolted on $4 billion that this Reality Labs unit 
lost this stock would be much, much higher, well north of $300 per share. That could potentially be coming down the pike. Mark certainly sung Frank Sinatra tunes to analyst on the last call. Wouldn't surprise me if he knows exactly what to say on this call. The momentum in Meta is there. You let that momentum continue to run. Any stock that you have looking like this, you let your winner run, run, run until the chart tells you that it is over. And right now there is zero, absolute zero technical evidence that this steep uptrend is over. You let this baby run until it stops. Meta looking great after Q1. More importantly, Q2 looks fantastic, and we are going to start to look out to Q3 and Q4, which could potentially look great as well. That was Meta Platforms. Hopefully, you guys had a wonderful day out there. Obviously, we'll be back again on Friday to talk more about all the FANG stock earnings that we had come across this week. Until then, good luck with your investments.